presentation is about getting the message across. So as a public speaker, as somebody who speaks on stage, you cannot get the message across unless you connect with your audience. So here are the tips that you must consider when you want to go and make a presentation somewhere for you to connect with your audience in the very first 90 seconds. I like to use a framework called rapport. Some people say rapport, but I like to say rapport. You must create that rapport with your audience and the R is you must relate. When I talk about relating, I mean you must find common ground between you and your audience for you to make a connection. I have seen speakers who go on stage and probably say something like, two years ago, I was sitting where you are seated today. That's a very good way for you to establish a common ground with your audience so that you can be relatable. I've also seen speakers who have gone on stage and used a relatable story, a story that can be well understood by the audience and they relate with it. That is a very good way for you to create rapport in the first 90 seconds for somebody to want to know, do I want to keep listening to this person? Is this message for me? Is it relevant? Does this person care about me? Is this person going to help me in any way? So you want to connect with your audience by being relatable. And there are very many different ways you can use to create that relatability with your audience. It could be probably even just dressing the way they are dressed that day. I've seen that happen also when I go to do company talks where, for example, yes, I am the speaker, but if they said dress in business casual, I don't want to go there in a full on suit. I also want to be business casual so that they don't see me as a person up there who's speaking over them, but they see me as somebody who's going to just have a conversation with them. I hope that makes sense. So whatever you can find that can relate with your audience, then that means you must know your audience beforehand. It's a very important thing for you to do before you go on any stage to speak. You must know your audience. What are their ages? What exactly do they do? What are they looking to learn? So that now you can use that information to come up with something that is relatable to them. When they give you their attention in the first 30 seconds, 90 seconds, I can assure you, you will maintain that attention for the next 30 minutes or the one hour that you are there to speak. So in that framework rapport, the A is for acknowledge. Acknowledge what? Acknowledge their presence. Acknowledge that they sat there to listen to you. And this is really respecting the audience and acknowledging them for just being there. And the thing that I have seen working is by even saying thank you, starting by saying thank you very much for taking one hour out of your busy schedule to come and listen to me. That already tells the audience that this person cares about us. He doesn't think he's all that. He is ready to have a conversation with us. That's something you can do. What else? Acknowledging also that the audience knows something about the subject is usually a very good way for you to show respect to the audience. Why? Because you, you go to an audience where you think you know something, but really the people who come to listen to you know quite a lot. And I've seen this happening in my own situation because I go and speak, sometimes I speak to experts in leadership Sometimes I speak to experts in coaching, people who are coaches. And some people even come to listen to me so that they know how to go and apply it in their own fields. What does that mean? They already know this stuff. So even the thing I'm going to talk to them about might not be entirely new. So just acknowledging that your audience knows something about that topic, it goes a long way for the audience to feel respected by you and so that they see you as somebody who's coming to help them and have a conversation with them, but not somebody who's putting the, themselves up there. 
so that's another good way the other thing i have seen that has actually really worked for me just to acknowledge that this audience is important to me is not sitting at the very front sometimes they may say that these are the seats that are dedicated to the speakers that's okay you can respect that and you can sit that there but it is also okay for you to sit in the midst of the audience i like that a lot so that you just go and sit with them and then when you're called to go and speak just come from the audience and go and speak that really shows them that wow wow they're not feeling so high flying you know they're here with us they're connecting with us and that's very very important so the p in the rapport is personalize people love personalized attention People want to know that the thing you're talking to us about, you didn't just go and read the theory of it and now you're bringing it to us. You actually feel this thing. You're in this thing. You know, it's personal to you. And speakers who are very personal, they really connect with their audience in the very first few seconds. And so you want to learn that as a tip to use in your next speaking engagement. Can you find a personal story that relates to the audience and the message that you're about to give. It could be, for example, you went to an audience which is struggling with finances and you are going to talk to them about money management. Can you relate that to your own personal story by saying that you are broke and broken. Oh, that's a good one. I whipped it in there, you know. I've seen people give stories about when they were so broke and they were bankrupt. And that's why they are the person to be talking to us because they have gone through it. It's their story. And a lot of leaders do well in their leadership journeys when they relate, when their stories relate to the stories of the people that they are leading. So even for you as a speaker, can you go and show the people that you're speaking to that this is a very personal topic, you care about it, you're passionate about it, and that is the reason why you think the message is important to this audience. So that it doesn't look like you just went and read somewhere, read a bunch of books, and then you came to give them the theory bit of it. And so the next time you go to give a speech on stage, find some personal insights, find some personal things that connect with your audience and share that. If it is something that you have gone through and that is why you're sharing this message, be vulnerable enough to share that. And when I say vulnerable, I don't mean broadcasting. I just mean find a way to connect with that audience by sharing that very personal story. If it's a personal triumph that you experienced, go ahead and share that. Make it very personalized. Now, that helps you connect with your audience in the first 90 seconds. And when you have them in the first 90 seconds, you can be sure that they will be wanting to stay with you for the next 30 minutes or 40 minutes or for the next hour that you are there. The P in the rapport is purpose. Now, purpose is very important because it speaks into why should we listen to you? Why is this message important to us? And something you must remember that it's about the audience, it's not about you. Even the message you're giving is about the audience, it's not about you. And so when you're studying your message, when you're studying your presentation, make sure that you connect with your audience in the first 90 seconds by telling them why this is important. Now, how can you do that? Very many ways to do that. But the ones I know that work for sure, sometimes you can even give a fact. You can state a fact. You can say, for example, two out of five people die every year from this and that and that. That already shows the audience why it is important for them to listen to this message because it is serious. You can start by saying, in the whole world, 
only 2% of people know this secret. And then you can give the secret. And the reason you must know this secret is because it's going to help you do this and that. Now, what you're doing, you're communicating the why of your message. Why should they sit there for the next 15 minutes and 30 minutes to listen to you? Because there is something in that message for them. Always remember that, for them. There is a problem they want to solve. There is a gap they want to fill. There is a sort of emotion they want to evoke inside of them. Whatever it is, you're doing it for them. So it is very important for you as you start your presentation to make sure that you connect with them on that level of this is why you should listen to me. Sometimes it's even by stating your expertise in an area. Just saying that you have done this for 20 years is enough for me to want to know, wait a minute. So he actually knows what he's talking about. And you start with that. Some people do their credentials. I don't really like when people read your credentials, PhD, MBA, what, 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 what. It's sometimes it can get too long. But if there is a way you can weave that in there so that the people know that you're here to say something. I think it's important for me to share my story. Because when I started speaking, I was very young. When I started doing the training engagements, I was young and I was also small. I'm still small right now. So sometimes when I put on my jeans and my t-shirt, I may look like I'm a very young girl. And so sometimes I will go to an audience which is much older than me and very, very highly accomplished. So it's very easy for them to look at me and wonder, wait, what is she going to tell us? So at that point, when I get to an audience which is much older than me, very experienced. I always like to bring it in somewhere, not by saying it straight on, but to bring it in that I am actually qualified in this. I have this much experience because now that connects with the audience and they know, oh, we can actually listen to her. So, but you want to be careful how you do that so that it doesn't come out as bragging as saying, listen to me because I have the papers. No, but you're finding a way to connect with your audience by showing them that, yes, you, should, you, you want to listen to me because I can actually help you with this and this and this. So that's going to be very, very important for you. The O in the rapport is openness. Very important for you to be genuine with your audience. The reason openness is very important is so that they can know that you are relatable to them and also for them to trust you. If they can trust you, then they'll be happy to listen to the message that you're bringing to them. So how can you be open with your audience? The first thing you can do sometimes is to just share a personal story. Personal stories never disappoint. So share a personal story about yourself. And also, the other thing that I have found working like magic is not trying to show them you know something that you actually don't know. You know the people sitting in the audience usually think that the speaker knows everything? And even when they ask you questions, they expect that you're going to have an answer to everything. The speakers I have seen to do very well are the speakers that when a question comes and you're not able to answer that question, you can, first of all, throw it back to the audience to just see where, what the thinking is and what the line of questioning is. Or you can say that... I don't really think I have the answer for that today, but I'm going to go and find out. And the person who taught me how to do public speaking and presentations told me, and when you say that you're going to find out, make sure you actually do find out because you might find yourself in the same audience next time. And then they ask you the same question and then you still say that you're going to find out. So when you see that this is a question you need to go find more information on, make sure you actually do go and find more information. So what openness does, it, it helps you connect with your audience in the very first 
few seconds because when you go on stage and I don't advocate for you to go on stage and say, oh, I don't even know why they called me. I've seen people who do that as part of humor and sometimes it really does backfire on you where you go on stage and then you say, I, I don't even know why they called me. I don't know anything about this subject. You might think it's funny and people might laugh, but it might not really go down well with your audience because they'll be thinking, why did they call him to come and speak to us about it if he knows nothing about it? So that's not what I'm talking about when I say be genuine so that they can trust you. All I'm saying is it's important for you to be open with them so that they know that you might not know everything, but you do know something about this subject and that's why you're sharing with them. You know? So just be open to the fact that you're willing to have a conversation about this. That's one way of being open, telling your personal story, showing that you're here to have a conversation, showing them that you're not the know-it-all and you know everything in the world, just showing that we want to have this conversation and there are some things that I would like to share with you. So next time you go on stage to speak with people, make sure you're open enough, make sure you are genuine, make sure you're vulnerable without really broadcasting and just show some connection with the audience by being relatable. The R in the rapport is for respect. You must respect your audience. They came here, they took time off their busy schedule to come and listen to you you must show that you respect that. How do you do that? First of all, don't go late to your speaking engagement. And if you did go late to your speaking engagement and they saw you walking in, when you go up on stage, don't just start as though nothing happened, especially if they waited for you to come. You must use your first 90 seconds to say something that relates to you being late so that they know you are genuinely apologetic for it. For example, you can say, some circumstances are very hard to control. This morning I found myself da 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 Do you see what you just did there? You respected them, but also you shared a personal story that is going to connect and relate so well with them because they are also human beings and sometimes they get late. So it's important for you to acknowledge them and to respect their time. It's also important for you to respect their opinions. Sometimes you go to a speaking engagement and you're on stage. It's not time to ask questions yet, but you see somebody raising their hand. It's important for you to acknowledge that you saw that hand. And if you have time, you can say, yes, would you like to say something? Or you can say, I see that hand, I see that hand, but allow me to just finish this thought and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask your question or to say something. What does that mean? You respect them. Because if people are raising their hand and you're ignoring them, that's not going to work for you. And that's going to lose people's attention. So in the first 90 seconds when you start speaking, find a way that's going to show respect to the audience. Sometimes it's by even giving your own personal story and sometimes it's by asking them a question that shows them that they know something or by stating something that is so good about them and congratulating them for it that shows that you actually do respect them. The other thing that I've seen working very well that shows a lot of respect is you learning other your audience's names. In fact, I really like to recommend this. Next time you go to speak somewhere, go a little bit earlier and meet a few people. Meet John, meet Mary, get to find out what do they do, get to know their names and even write them down. Then when you go speaking, you say, thank you very much for inviting me here. Mary, I was speaking to Mary earlier in the session or during tea break. Do you know what that does? It just shows that, wow, this person does respect other people. They even know other people's, the, the audience's names. That is really, really important. So if you can use that tip next time you go speak, it's going to work very well for you. So respect your audience. The last letter in that framework, rapport, is a T, the silent T. And the T is for tone. 
This is very, very important when you're starting any speech. If you go up there and your tone is sort of boring, you might, people might just shut and not want to continue. So it depends on what you're going to talk about, but you must grab their attention by the tone of your voice. It does matter. It does matter the message that you're going to be speaking about because if it's a sad message, then your tone must start as that. If it's a happy and hype message, then your tone must start like that, but it must grab the attention of people. So sometimes you might just go there and pause for 30 seconds and say nothing. That really grabs the attention of people. Not awkward silence to show that you've forgotten what you wanted to talk about, no. Just going on stage and just be silent, observe, and then start your speech. Or go and start with a very low tone because the matters you're about to discuss are of a very serious nature. For example, you could go and say, in this year alone, we have lost a hundred people to accidents on the road. You don't wanna go up there and be hype about it. It's not a happy moment. So the tone of your voice is going to matter a lot in how you connect with your audience in the very first 90 seconds. So the next time you're invited to go and speak on stage, I would like you to consider this framework rapport 